scalable blockchain payments kind of sounds a contradiction these days, uh, but we need scalable production uh, deployments of payments uh, because we are a micropayments company. We have clients with millions of uh, uh, digital so we have uh, digital publishers as clients that have millions of users and we need to scale to something uh, that is just pragmatically um, yeah, fast and uh, uh, scales now and is scaled now and not just uh, in a few years time so that's why we looked into this topic obviously quite intensively and if I should speak slower maybe raise a hand or something so I tend to speak quite fast so I'll slow down I'll try to at least Okay, so um, let's uh, do a little recap here. We have um, about 800 uh, different blockchains, and the number goes up and down a lot. And uh, same with the tokens, uh, 1,100 uh, tokens according to CoinMarketCap. Also, this number kind of varies. There's a lot of uh, projects that are coming and disappearing. And uh, we have um, uh, sort of a Cumbrian explosion, so an evolutionary uh, point in time where a lot of things are happening. It's kind of mushrooming in all different directions and we have uh, a lot of diversity and uh, to the mainstream uh, we have exactly uh, zero that really made it to a mainstream uh, where my mom is using blockchain so that's not happened that hasn't happened yet and one big issue for that is that uh, either uh, systems are not scalable or people think they're not scalable or corporates think they're not scalable so they kind of uh, take their hands off this but this is kind of changing slowly but uh, in my opinion a bit too slowly and um, yeah so we have only about three to four million regular users of cryptocurrency or of blockchains in a sense and this is uh, according to a study by the university of cambridge so uh it's d just a very very small number when compared to the world population we uh, are dealing with a very very small sort of uh, pioneering field here and uh, so what has been the killer app so far uh, well speculation right so that's uh, what uh, most blockchain users do or cryptocurrency users do and uh, well let's call it diversification let's not call it speculation it sounds a bit better when we say diversification so other asset classes uh, classes are being complemented by blockchain or cryptocurrencies and uh, of course uh, I'm talking about coin and token offerings and there are more uh, new kind of flavors of that uh, security token offerings so this has been the primary use case so far and that's what mainly a uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain is, is known for this can be for good or for a bad reason I mean uh, we have seen a lot of scams especially last year so this has given the whole space a bit of a bad reputation but uh, I think we are all here to to work on that uh, to improve that reputation as well um, so what we're looking at with uh, this uh, with the current killer app is peer-to-peer -peer venture capital which you are probably all aware of and um, this, uh, this use case is actually uh, um, utilizing uh, is the programmable money approach. So you could call that the killer app of blockchains, that we have money or like funds or value transfers that we can attach certain code to or conditions to. So this is um, vastly superior to any type of money that we have at the moment, either in cash or in, in bank transfers. We m sometimes have in traditional systems um, like a multi-signature, but that's kind of about it. Uh, but as you know, with smart contracts and also simple operations on uh, simple blockchains, you have uh, things like time locks, uh, yeah, uh, multi-signature, and, and various other kind of conditions you can attach to that. And then, yeah, with smart contracts, of course, you can go absolutely crazy and uh, build whole companies based uh, on uh, like a token system. Um, this is fueling a, uh, an industry of 150 million uh, euros, roughly. Uh, so this is, of course, the, the total coin market cap. So, I mean, it is uh, quite a big killer use case that we have here already. And uh, it's growing by the day, especially these days, it's growing again uh, into the positive uh, area. Um, so, and let's talk a bit about uh, the blockchain trilemma when it comes to scalability or generally what we have to deal with. Um, so we have uh, three things that we would like to have from a blockchain. Uh, decentralization, security, and scalability. But guess what? You can only choose two. So you can't have all three, so you have to make uh, compromises. And um, so that's kind of the art. If we have a blockchain system that fulfills all three of them, uh, I think we, we have a total winner. But currently that hasn't really happened yet for various reasons that we also heard in the last talk. Cryptographic limitations and also, well, just trust models and uh, things just don't scale well because we're reaching, we're reaching physical limits in some ways. Um, 
so let's talk about the, the main item scalability here a bit. And um, so the number one metric that uh, most blockchains are measured by is their transaction network. Sorry, the, the number of transactions on the network. And um, here we, are, we, we have differences between on-ledger and off-ledger um, scalability or transaction numbers. So meaning on-ledger, everything is written to the public ledger, everybody can uh, audit. And off-ledger, we have sort of uh, systems next to the main ledger that regularly uh, speak to the, um, to the main ledger, to the main data storage, and um, yeah, reach scalability by that way. And let's look at uh, some of the examples of uh, sort of major cryptocurrencies or blockchains and uh, how they're performing in terms of scalability. So we have um, Bitcoin with four transactions per second and uh, hopefully someone is going to challenge me on that number. Um, so relatively low, it's the most uh, censorship resist resistant chain, but also uh, one of the slowest in terms of transactions per second. Uh, then we have Ethereum with around 20, and uh, Ripple claims to do 1,500 per second, and Stellar claims to claims to do 2,000 uh, per second. Uh, which the last number uh, I can speak from experience that um, yeah I would like to challenge that number. So in theory it's that, but in practice we are sometimes reaching 10 transactions per second and hitting certain limits, and the ledgers are full and. Uh, sort of uh, arti uh, like artificial limitations that have been introduced in the beginning need to be lifted soon to make this uh, scale to these numbers. And I, I think it's the, the same for Ripple. So just as a, s a small side note. Um, so then in terms of costs, these of course go up and down a little bit. I think Bitcoin might be a bit cheaper now these days. Uh, so we have like about 30 euro cents for one transaction as a cost, uh, monetary cost to transport through the network. And uh, then we have Ethereum with roughly 11 cents, and we have Ripple with a fraction of a cent, and then we have Stellar with even lower transaction fees, like uh, 10 thousands of a cent. And um, in the case of Stellar, because of the search pricing, uh, prices went up a little bit, but it's still almost uh, negligible from, uh, in terms of monetary value per transaction that you want to send. If you want to send a cent and you send like uh, a hundredth of that, as a transaction fee, that's still totally fine. So that's actually quite handy for a micropayment use case. Um, and sort of confirmation times or when uh, the transaction can be uh, deemed valid on the network. Um, so Bitcoin, we have roughly an hour still, like six confirmations. And then we have Ethereum with 15 seconds. Also, that number is disputed, but that's uh, kind of considered uh, to be a safe uh, transaction after a few um, blocks. Ripple, four seconds, and then we have uh, Stellar with five seconds, and those are huge differences, of course, uh, between Bitcoin and Stellar. And why that is, um, yeah, most of you know probably already. We have uh, a proof-of-work system, uh, which is mining uh, in Ethereum and in Bitcoin, where we are talking about on-ledger transactions. And uh, for the other two, it's uh, a variation of proof of stake, meaning all the coins are pre-mined, uh, or most of them are pre or actually all of them are pre-mined, and they're, they're just being pushed around. And the only thing we need to prove is that uh, the transaction of existing coins is uh, valid. So, um, and because of these uh, sort of uh, properties, we chose a Satoshi Pay Stellar as our main ledger, and we're quite happy with it for the moment. Just as a comparison where we need to get if we want to scale to uh, existing payment system level, uh, Visa um, in some internal tests is doing 56,000 transactions per second. Uh, they're reaching I think 16,000 in uh, some of the major sales events in retail per second, uh, like uh, Black Friday and Christmas and so on. Uh, so they're not fully uh, using that yet. Transaction fees are um, at uh, as interchange fee like uh, about 9 euro cents. And we have another 1.5% fee on top of that. Um, the number of uh, how fast a uh, visa transaction is confirmed is not really public, but uh, because it's just an internal database entry, we assume it's uh, below one second. So it's, uh, that's the, the least, uh, least time on all of these. So that's kind of where we want to get to compete with these systems if we want to compete in the payment area with uh, like legacy technology. So, um, so these are all on-ledger times, and uh, we are talking about, uh, I want to quickly talk about off-ledger as well. And, um, sorry, that can't be right with the two minutes, because, no, oh, uh, okay. Um, so we have second layer solutions, 
And uh, one of them is uh, the Lightning Network, which you know, which is uh, another layer on top of an, uh, a ledger, and that's kind of uh, tightly um, uh, sort of uh, connected to the, the underlying data, data structure and transaction structure. And um, we have side chains and child chains. And uh, also these are using external uh, infrastructure to kind of reach higher throughput per second. And we are being promised millions of transactions per second. Sometimes uh, even we, ha we have the claim of uh, like infinity number of transactions per second, uh, which of course uh, is not true. But um, yeah, there's, there's great hope that this can be scaled massively. Um, so one issue with those is there's a very complex trust model. So with a transaction uh, in Bitcoin, I kind of get it after a while. Uh, it's it's uh, also already complicated, but it's quite uh, simple compared to the trust models that we have in, let's say, uh, uh, two-directional two state channels and, and uh, we have other escrows and so on and so forth. So it's quite hard to get your head around and also by that an extension to make it safe. Because if you don't understand the system fully in your head, it's hard to make it safe as well. Um, so also, most of them are not production ready yet, or, well, I would even claim that none of them is production ready yet uh, to use for us, for example, uh, as Satoshi Pay as another ledger. And, um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's a major issue. Just briefly on consensus mechanisms that we have. Um, mainly, or, well, delegated proof of stake is the one that's uh, kind of being talked about a lot and implemented a lot and a lot of chains and a lot of side chains. And we have the Byzantine fault tolerance in the case of Stellar, which is another sort of cryptographic way of proving that transactions have happened and that they are valid. Um, brief uh, excursion here, why we also have the need to transact uh, more uh, things on ledgers are fiat tokens. And uh, those are obviously uh, blockchain versions of uh, Euro tokens, or sorry, of, of uh, like existing fiat assets, or uh, essentially every, everything can be tokenized. But this is uh, where tokenization is happening uh, quite heavily at the moment. And um, yeah, we have one, for example, the Euro token, uh, which is uh, a Euro on the Stellar blockchain that's already in existence uh, for a few years, and we use that internally. And Tempo in France here uh, are our partners with that, so that's already live and uh, regulated, and, and we can use it for our uh, transactions. So they also have a direct SEPA gateway, which is kind of sexy. You can uh, do blockchain to SEPA if you want. And um, yeah, they have all advantages of blockchain technology. And uh, they have no volatility, well, almost no volatility compared to crypto assets. And uh, yeah, so they, they kind of combine the, two, the best of two worlds. And um, yeah, fiat or stable tokens already have a market cap of roughly 2 billion euros. So it's already quite a huge market and it's, it's growing rapidly because of course it's a very convenient way also in trading if you just park your money in, in Tether and not uh, in, a, in a dollar that you have to kind of uh, uh, push through the banking system. So that's why this uh, has reached quite a big market cap already. Um, yeah, cryptocurrency is still being used, uh, for example, for fees, of course. You have to move these coins around or these tokens around. That's why cryptocurrency is still needed to incentivize the network to actually transport these fiat tokens. So cryptocurrency is not going away w because of fiat tokens, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's still being used for, for actually making the transaction happen. Um, there's a lot of regulatory uncertainty in the uh, stablecoin fiat token field uh, because they are quite complex uh, financial instruments uh, in some legislations. Uh, for example, in Germany, it's, it's quite hard to define what it actually is. And there are different uh, opinions, obviously, by the regulator and then the startups, like our startup and the regulator in Germany. So we might uh, differ on some things. Um, so that's, that's, an, that's a huge issue, but this is being solved at the moment. And also through the likes of uh, IBM, uh, who are working closely with central banks now with their World Wire project um, to bring official like state bank issued fiat tokens to the world. And that's kind of uh, a nice transition, I think, in a blockchain only world uh, when we start with officially uh, traded or officially exchanged fiat tokens. So uh, this will be a huge boost for adoption of blockchain, to blockchain technology in general. So quick conclusion here. Uh, we uh, see that scalability systems are maturing, so there was always the need for scalability, and now we always already see systems that are actually working in the real world, and um, yeah, that's uh, uh, like a huge focus of many people working in that field. That's also why the room is full, I suppose, because uh, people want to see scalable blockchain models. And um, 
yeah, the proof of stake and more specifically the delegated proof of stake appears to have uh, most traction at the moment. Of course, uh, yeah, there are many, many different flavors coming back to the Cumbrian explosion. This is a, like a permissionless innovation system, so everybody come can come up with their better algorithm and let them compete, and then a winner will appear for each industry at some point. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to more scalable solutions in 2019, and uh, that's it from me. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.